Hey guys, I'm Igor from IM Customs and today we are going to do an unboxing of this EK full cover block for Gigabyte G1 Sniper 5 motherboard. Also, I'll show you how to mount this block on the board and the links for all of that will be in the description below. So, let's start with the unboxing. We should firstly talk about pros and cons of water cooling your motherboard. And if you know them already or if you don't want to hear about them, you can just skip to the unboxing part of the video by clicking the button on the screen. Water cooling your motherboard, VRM, PLX and South Bridge ships won't give you any more FPS in games or something like that. You won't even get that much higher overclocks on your CPU cause stock cooling solutions are usually pretty good and sufficient enough on newer boards. So mostly the main benefit is looks and if you water cool everything in your system, as I will in my project Ultima which you can find in the links below, you can also do your board as well. But there are a lot of problems you can encounter. Full board blocks like this one are much harder to install and you can break something much easier while doing that. So I suggest you take your time with it and also have someone there to help you. You will see a few problems that I stumbled upon later in the video and if you think you are up to the task I wish you good luck and we can now start with the unboxing. As you can see this is the classic CSQ designed box cover for EK blocks. But this sticker on top that says clean CSQ tells us that the block inside doesn't have circles on it. So when we remove this box cover we find an orange EK box with an EK logo on top and we can open it right now. As we open the box we can see a manual and some accessories. So let's check out the manual first. A manual is pretty detailed and with lots of pictures and it comes with instructions on how to remove your stock heatsinks, clean the chips, place thermal pads and of course the block itself. Now we have a couple of thermal pads with plastic protection on both sides and some bolts and plastic washers. When we open the second compartment, we find some foam padding and a block inside. The base of this block is made of microplated copper, while the top is made of high quality acrylic material, so it's not as soft as some acetal blocks. And you can see how good looking the block is right now. Now we can start with the mounting tutorial. We have a Sniper 5 board with a couple of bits power blocks on CPU and RAM memory and we'll flip it around so we can disassemble the stock heatsink. We need one Phillips screwdriver and we have to take off all of these bolts. And this is the first problem that I encountered. This bolt was tightened too much and when I tried to remove it, it stand on a heatsink broke off, so I was unable to do that, but I could remove the heatsink as you can now see. And when you remove those two heat sinks, don't forget to unplug the LED and fan connectors.
Lastly, I took it off camera to remove that bolt with its stand still attached. Now it's cleaning time. And of course, I use my 3 step alcohol method with toilet paper, earbuds and microfiber cloth to do just that. Now you can see that all of the VRM, PLX and South Bridge ships are clean and we can proceed to thermal pad placement. You can see that the left part of VRMs are a bit shorter than the bottom part, so I'll mark it with a nail and cut off this thermal pad so we have enough thermal pad for PLX chip. Also I'll cut these little pads as well so I can cover these two little chips on the bottom. And that's it. Now I'll use an EK Ecotherm thermal paste on every chip before I apply the pads. And I'll clean up the excess paste that spilled around the chips. Now you should peel off both plastic protection on thermal pads and place them on chips. <laughs> and try not to make a mistake like I did on one of the pads. Now we have to put a bit of thermal paste on a South Bridge chip and on that chip we don't put any thermal pads cause it makes a full contact with the block. The 
And now we are ready to place a block on top. And as you can see, the block is pretty clean from the factory, but we'll use this microfiber cloth just a bit. And the base is perfectly clean now. So we can now put the block on top and you can't miss a lot because it fits nicely along the first PCI slot and especially if the CPU block is mounted and we push it down a bit so all thermal pads and thermal paste can spread nicely and stick to it. And it's now time to bolt it in so we can take out these bolts and plastic washers. And also you should have someone there to help you do that, cause if you do it alone you must hold the block with one hand and bolt it with the other and you can drop the block and break it or drop the whole motherboard. So I strongly suggest you don't do that alone. I'll put just a few bolts like this to hold it down in place and flip the motherboard to finish bolting it in. Now I'll just clean it up a bit, but we have now finished with mounting this block. And one thing I forgot to do, which I did off camera, was peeling off this plastic protection from the top EK logo. And you can now see the fully mounted and finished block. And when you see everything mounted and finally finished like this, you really forget about the problems and troubles you encountered and focus on benefits of water cooling like I talked about in the beginning. All of this will go in my Project Ultima build, which you can find in the description below, and that should be all. Like the video if you liked it, you can leave your comments in the comment section below. I am Igor from IAM Customs, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.